Oh, send. Hey, you might want to just sit over there. Or Are you just you... sharing a screen? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. We yeah. love the back of your head. Actually, oh, I like it better on TV, too. <laughs> Yep, I got it nice and done. Jesse's doing it. Is this done now, guys? Is this, this is done. I break my off on it. I don't know. We are right side for myself. Just so that you know. Okay, we'll call town board workshop number two. I see for you know that all town board members are present. And uh, turn it over to Mr. Patty. And I'll share the screen. Hopefully, the public can see that. We can see it, right. If someone wanted to just check quickly on their phone, make sure it looks okay. I got an email already saying it's okay. live. So. so hopefully it's sharing. Oops. Actually, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to reshare just because it's uncertain there for a minute. Just click. Yeah. I'm going to just do that. Yep. Let me see if I'm sorry. Okay, so um, just to kind of orient everybody, this is what I summarized from looking at the, or watching the public hearing. I tried to capture everything I could. We've got a lot of public comments through email. Yep. Um, also, there's been some feedback provided by different advisory boards. The Conservation Advisory Board provided some feedback, but those were all in emails as well. So, so um, I'm going to just kind of quickly glimpse through this document just so you can kind of see what we're talking about here. So just so that everyone knows there's it's quite a bit, but it's a lot more than a, or it's not as much as it looks, but it's a nine and a half pages long. Okay. So that's what we have to go through. Hopefully we can do it, but before 5 p.m. today, that's our cutoff time today. And we'll jump right into it. And I do have the law here as well, but I tried to um make it as easy to follow as possible. So we'll see where we need to, we can jump, jump back and look at the actual wording on the law. Okay. Did you update this? I did. Okay. It's so the same thing you sent me saw, three pages. Yeah, it's because I've added some discussion to try and make this as efficient. I think it will agree, but what I've added for comments, we can change, but I try to make it as efficient as possible. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. And also I this one here, I made into one comment because they're kind of the same thing, but coming from different ends of the spectrum. So the first one is for section 181-4, um, there is no need to set up yet another tree advisory board to review permits or review permits or provide recommendations of the town board. We already have a conservation advisory board that should fulfill that role, the role of the proposed advisory board. The town has enough challenges filling seats in existing advisory boards that alone creating another one. Just on the opposite end of that same one, so that we have a full discussion um, from the CAD, and I think they did send an email on this um, related comment. Oppose assigning management of the tree um, tree board activities to CAD. The CAD is a very active is very active with many responsibilities directly related to increased commercial development. In addition to the National Arbor Society, so it requires a tree committee to meet the criteria for the designation of a community become a tree city, which is, which in turn provides opportunity. So conservation boards saying they don't think they have the bandwidth to do this. Um, other folks are saying they just, they're concerned about whether we can staff it and whether um, there's a need for a second, another advisory board, which we already have quite a few. So I'm gonna open it the floor up to discussion from there on that. Pros and cons, should we go with a tree board, or should it be incorporated into the conservation advisory board? Well, we're trying to, the, the idea of having a tree board would be to get a tree city USA designation, right? That's and right. I don't believe that's required per what Janet pointed out that we, tree USA requires a tree care plan. 
It's a committee. It's a committee. Yeah. Not a board. So you, yeah, they it's, need some kind of a. It's so it's an oversight. And I don't think it needs. I mean, it's personally, not expensive. I don't want to leave it with Gab. Yeah, I don't either. I I would like to, but the committee can be com comprised of primarily town employees. We sure. have we have an we have Dave Cole and Dick doing the tree inventory now. I mean, we already have. Well, we already have a committee in place, right? So our tree inventory. So I mean, I would think that somehow that could segue off that. And work into what we want. I think leaving it in Cavs wheelhouse is not the right place to put it, especially now they don't want they're they're here already. So yeah. we have the open space inventory thing. Yep. And so it sounds like I think we have to have a committee. I don't think well, I mean, but the argument yeah, is we can we can utilize existing tree committee. Yeah, or we could but it's about having twice people. Yeah, yeah. And I'd rather right? I'd rather have a separate board. Could we just designate the existing cab as our tree committee too? Sure, but I don't want it. No, I don't think that's right. Oops. I would agree, especially if their argument is they have so much on their board. I mean, so much certainly, to play, you know, they're more than qualified to do it, but if they, you know, share the well. So that's a decision. No one disagrees with that. We we'll go on to the next one. Um, so, section 181 10 should specify that no tree removal should be permitted until after site plans are approved by town officials. This could have prevented the clear cutting of trees at the South Point prior to site subdivision plans being approved by the, by the town. Thoughts on that for everybody? I don't know how you do that. I won't do that either. Because sometimes they have to do the utilities first, right? Do well, well the utilities should be no the first thing that typically when a, a project is being started, the first thing they do after the site plans are or subdivision plans are approved is they go in and they clear. However, there's nothing in our law that states that you can't go in and clear prior to that. That's what you're trying to intercept here. Right. And that was definitely a concern for South Point. And you know, obviously that's that ship has sailed, but should we consider putting that in this law? I I think there's there's a question that I think we really need to have some legal guidance on. Yeah, I think it may have intentionally been left out for that reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that you are preventing people from removing trees from their property can constitute a take. Right, right. right. That's the issue. That's that's what I'm saying. I mean, that's the whole drain we're dancing around this whole thing. Yeah. So. I mean, should we make that a restriction? I guess that. Well, would, I, I, I think, I again, can. as I said, go back to the, we really need a legal opinion. Can we make it a restriction? Should we? In a, my heart of hearts, yes, I would love to. Mm -hmm. However, I'm not going to do something that's going to fly in the face of a legal re requirement and give a suit, a legal hurdle. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so I think we move on from that one because we need. An executive right. session on that one. Next one, um, 11. So 181.11 lists a fine of not more than $350. This is my my uh, my copy, which was from October, though, says 250. In the law. Um, we did change that because um, if you recall, it would have been from late November, November 29th. Okay, I must not have the most of it. So okay, the November 29th, which Pete, um, got, Peter Godfrey sent out, it was the one that the, all the new requirements was added yeah, into. Okay. But the maximum, the three, maximum three, 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 that they could put was 350, and they went with the maximum. So that ended up that 700 is the maximum by law that we can charge for the first offense. Right. That's all the town can do. The maximum is 350 for first offense. So, in the, in the, in the, let's let's go back to the south point so case. so let me just finish okay. this because you'll have a benefit from this because okay so they violated it we can do the 350 dollar fine for first offense right. 700 and a thousand that obviously will have no real impact right um and, and that's basically a summary but to continue the law does have very significant consequences which um, it provides for significant consequence currently beyond the fine. In addition to any other penalty, trees removed without a permit shall be subject to a tree replacement plan approved by the town board, which shall include but not be limited to 
and it's got a risk. Okay. So if they go and do a clear cutting, if it's not approved um, through the permitting process, they have to replace sometimes on the same site or if the town board, the town board will end up deciding. Like we do with weapons. Right. Banking. Yep. We'll end up banking it and finding a spot to put the equivalent amount of trees. The argument is that though, if they cleared it on that site, they probably don't want it there. So they're probably not going to put it back to where they took it from because they're going to build something. Right. That would right. be why they cleared it. So that, that is kind of true. Right. So, so yeah. Or they would give a payment from that to town to replace those trees somewhere else. Okay. If they breached, that's a pretty big consequence. Okay. As I mean, they can pay three hundred fifty dollars or up to a thousand, well, or and tens of tens and tens of thousand dollars. First offense is trees. first offense is today. We find out they're clearing and cutting trees, and they say you can't do this without a plan. All right, fine. All right, there's three fifty. Tomorrow it's seven fifty. The next day it's a thousand. And I clear for a week. What happens after the thousand dollars every day thereafter? Well, it's three hundred fifty dollars plus. Let's say they clear three acres. Yeah. Whatever the replacement is for that yeah, amount. I'm just saying this monetary initial monetary fine. Right. right. That fine plus the plus we can do the replacement. It's both. Plus. Yes, I right. understand. Yep. Okay. And if you guys want me to go to the law, I can do that. No, that's fine. I trust you. Okay. So I do think. That concern, and actually, because it's on TV or on screen, let's just pull it up just so people see. Okay, so it's here. Okay, so most of other penalties. So yeah, here it is. In addition to any other penalty, trees removed without a permit shall be subject to a tree replacement plan approved by the town board, which shall include but not be limited to the following. So that tree replacement is they have to replace the trees they removed. Shall occur on site except where the town board determines that because of the constraints, it is impractical town board with the advice of the tree advisory board shall make a written determination of the number of trees that must be replanted to mitigate the impacts associated with the unlawful tree removal so i mean that's a pretty big impact um it does define the size of the tree, tree replacement plan shall incorporate a variety of tree species trees replacement shall be selected from the town council and be a minimum of two inches diameter breast height um, in caliper or as specified, and then the, a fee in lieu of, which is, I think that's sufficient. So if we're okay with that, I think that's the, our response is there is consequence. Okay. Any further discussion there? I was gonna say also subsec subsection E says that if they do this, we won't issue them a building permit or any other permit until that. So. Good point. Subsection E of E one eighty one. Yeah, it's right underneath uh, D. So it states that in E it states that in addition to the penalties outlined above, the town cannot issue a building permit or any other permit, any temporary certificate of occupancy. So until the town board deems appropriate. How are you? All right. Okay, I'm going to come back. Was it? Oh. Do you want anybody to come to the meeting? You're going to come, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll call. Probably got nervous. Ran away. Who was that? That actually works. Yeah. Okay, next one 1811 um, enforcement. Will the code enforcement. Yeah. Yeah. Will the code enforcement walk the property and use the town's tree inventory to know exactly what the gravity of such offense, 350, 700, 1,000, seems like pennies to not go through the hoops listed above to, to a developer? Extreme planning to a residential homeowner that build a newer, so it's a little bit garbled, but I took it to who's, 
So I indicated a single home built on individual property is not impacted by this law as per section 1810. Law applies only to a removal of trees on commercial property or housing developments. Well, right, but that frankly both of the point, but the reality is we can't just go and throw any number we want out there as a fine. So yeah. right. So we're looking at changing the size of the tree from six inches to four inches. That's going to come up. We'll we'll discuss that in a little bit. So that's not this one. That's a little later. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're at the, the no, top one. No, that's no, okay. No, I'm sorry. So I think this one is saying local we'll code enforcement walk the property and use the town's tree inventory to know exactly what the gravity is the fence. Extreme planning. You want me to intervene that with my comment? Yeah. But I don't want it interrupting. No, no, that's good. I wrote that because um my thought is that how 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 are you going to be able to assess the gravity of the fence that they made? So like you said, like John was saying, day one they cut this down, day two they cut this down. How will we be able to backtrack exactly how many trees were lost, what trees were lost, where they mature growth, were they young growth, where were they located, were they properly removed? So my question on that is what I'm saying is for a developer to go through all the, those numbers or that inventory, that seems like pennies for the amount of work and the effort they're going to have to put in it in order for the information they have to give you before they cut it through that. I mean, it's easier to just cut down. It's easier to just cut on a business strategy. Would Especially be, when you're talking about, like you said, when you're talking about that's the 800 pound gorilla that's sitting in the room. But, right, it's, you know? it's, but especially when you're looking at it from site plan approval or subdivision approval, you're not even talking 350 for every house. You're talking about a one time fee for the entire thing that they're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on. Well, it's the first day, right? Doesn't it say in the subject rule that it's per day and each day will be deemed as a separate offense? So, so, I, for so I, I wouldn't get hung up on the 350. The real consequence, if you have to replace with, you know, a three inch diameter tree, however many hundreds or thousands they may end up cutting down, that gets pretty darn expensive at forty dollars a pop. Yeah, but you also have to go through the expense of. My question is, how do you? If they don't, that? if so, the three hundred and fifty is not the real right. No, I but that. the point is, the the two impacts are like you said, the permit we may not issue because of their unlawfulness and the replacement. Sorry, go right. ahead. But Jen's point is, they go, they cut down all the trees. They haven't pulled a permit. We're going to find three hundred and fifty bucks. You don't even have a way now to go identify how many trees they cut down. It's gone. Yeah. So, so, so I started right. I, I think this is a legal question. I think there needs to be a standard, probably. Mm -hmm. There's literally nothing you can put in this law that would prevent that from happening. No, because the reality is we have a law. Well, you could say in you, general, you can't prevent somebody from intentionally violating a law. It is what you mean. Some people no, they can intentionally violate it, but if the law has some kind of a standard, 100 trees per acre will be the replacement cost of violating this law. So, yeah, yeah but what putting down I have a 20 acre parcel of land, it's fully wooded. I apply for an ag district and then I want to timber it. Because that's, an ag district, that's, another that's, question, a, that's allowed under an ag district. Right. That's exempt from this? Well, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not commercial. It's not a housing development. It is commercial. Exactly. I mean, because I'm, I'm timbering it for money, but you know, it's not a commercial development. It would never be triggered. Right. It's a harvesting. You'd you know, never harvest in your corn. You'd never have to apply for a plan approval. Right. This whole thing is triggered on the need to apply for a subdivision okay. or a site plan. Yeah. This law wouldn't be triggered unless you are in the zone you need to do that. I buy the same 20 acre parcel I want to put up a, a housing development, but I say, first of all, I'm not going to put up a housing development. I just want to timber the property. Mm -hmm. Then I sell it to uh, my second company that wants to put up a housing development. There's nothing we yep. have circumvented the law. Yep. yep. Which is what they typically do. Yep. Which are we spinning our wheels? And the one that bothers me is if you have two 20 acre parcels that are exactly the same topographically, one has trees on it, one is not. Why we does the one with trees now have less value than the one that does not? Yeah, because you know, because they, they don't need trees to do something with it centrally. So that, that's just really, the taking? that really that's tricking. 
It's really tricky. Well, and that's how that's why could you repeat that? I, I'm sorry, I'll start. You're just saying we have two parcels. One's just meadow, 20 acres, one is forested, 20 acres. Both want to do housing developments. Which which property is worth value more? Because, well, no because now you don't have to do this. That's one of the goals would be that the, the fewer the trees, the better. If it's a totally treeless property, that's where we would like that kind of development. I a, so I don't really have a problem. With, that's not a taking. No, I, no, it's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying thing, well, you've actually heard the value on a wood block. You, you've changed the property value. That is subject right. to interpretation because I know that when we, the history with the town, when we had developments that were in wooded areas, if you want those lots sold for more. Right. See, I, I disagree because yeah. this permit doesn't cost, they won't even bat an eye at doing the permit. It's irrelevant to them, yeah, it it was, other than the 60 coming. days. So it doesn't have it has no impact on the value of the property. Okay. Unless they breach the law and do a clear cutting and then have to replace hundred yeah. trees per acre, then that's where it becomes costly to them. And or put their permitted their building permitted risk. So I think we're okay there. But I do think there's a legal question that, that was brought up there, which is I don't think we can have someone just arbitrarily say it's this many trees. I think it needs to be in the law that, you know, if you breach it, this is your consequence. It's going to be 100 trees per acre or whatever standard someone can come up with. Does that make sense? Hearing yes, is it legally enforceable? Yeah. So that's, what, that's why we need to talk to legal about it. I mean, but keep in mind that God, you know, when we put it in the law, I just didn't say how many trees per acre they have to replace. Well, right, did. but there's a read. If you look at it might be a read. each tree having right. a 20 by 20 area, 400 square feet, that's about 100 trees per acre. Yeah. You, you just mentioned that. Right. Well. Well, so, I mean, but the legality of that is say, okay, well, I didn't have one that had all these trees. To... When the penalty becomes arbitrarily assigned. They yeah, destroy the evidence. evidence. So that is one in a weak position, an indefensible position in regards to that, in my but, opinion. But what is the evidence? If it's not wood, everybody can apply for a tree permit and you can't really deny one legally. So, I mean, what evidence will we get rid of? In as far as legal court question, as we go through this, we need to be cognizant of the fact that this, this has been reviewed and drafted by the attorneys who, who address a lot of these things when they put it together in this manner. So, but they've never really had it picked apart. So this is the first picking a part of it and challenging what if, what if, what if, and that's really what we're doing. So we're doing a failure mode analysis. And I think that's a good further follow-up discussion there. Any further concerns? Does that make sense to everybody? Are we doing okay with that? Tom, you good? To ask the attorneys about it, sure. <laughs> okay, next one. In section 8, 181.3, the definition of a tree um, is limited to six inches in diameter, approximately 18 inches circumference. I mean, that's that big. That's about what I would call a tree. Um, we believe the designation should be girth circumference of the tree. Um, the standard used to measure trees in the US is to take the circumference at four and a half feet, which is probably Breast height. The purpose, the proposed allowance of six inches is, would miss a majority of trees from the ordinance. We believe the definition should include all trees with a girth in excess of 12 and a half inches. Oh, that would be four inches. Is so who's yeah, we, four inches? I'm assuming the cap. Is it probably this came out of? I think this came out of Kirk and Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think the source matters. It's just. So um, right. any woody, so it's ordinance nice. states, any woody perennial plant deciduous is usually having a single main diameter of six inches at four and a half above at breast height. Okay, just so you know what we're So doing. the question is, do we want to change from six inches to four inches? And then, no. What's the negative to it? Block too much? And generally, there's no there's no monetary value for a tree. 
Okay. You know, I mean, very little monetary value on a six inch tree. Yeah, six inch tree. You know? I do think it's mature hardwoods. Right. right. I mean, with that, to get something there, you're, you're probably at least eight inches before you're actually going to mill that tree. Right. You know? Okay. And at least we're starting somewhere. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't have a problem. So maybe that's a bad way to put it. Uh, so it sounds like there's no desire to go smaller at this point. Okay. The roll of Mike, we're almost there. Okay. What page do we have? Okay, um, a third of the way there. It's not bad. So somebody talked about 13 inch circumference. Um, where is this measurement to be taken at least 10 inches off the ground? What where brand? So this is kind of the same right. as above. Right. Location is defined in ordinance. See above wording from law. So it's not arbitrary. It's breast well, height, which is four and a half feet. Yeah. There is a standard with PBH. Um, the, the ordinance only addresses trees as defined the, that exist on public or commercial property it does not address trees that exist on private property. We believe the ordinance should be expanded to require a permit for the destruction of trees on private property as well as with minimum guidelines. With, for example, a permit would be required to remove 30 trees or more per acre. So I just added this because we've had this discussion already. So I just said, original draft included all property one acre or greater a prior boards restricted proposed law to town property commercial and housing developments anything more restrictive was deemed unlikely to ever pass we, is this the same week as the one before no we, we believe that or not probably oh, probably yeah. Yeah. Thanks, sir. all right sorry can you say that again i, I just wanted to the, who's the week the sentence was we believe the ordinance yeah. source who is weak. Honestly, I don't I didn't capture the source, but I didn't think that okay. really matters. Okay. Whether it's could be I just wondered if it was conservation work. That's like what I'm trying to figure out. It wasn't because they've been through that. Okay. So it was probably some someone in the public brought that one. Okay. And I'm sorry, I didn't indicate it because I no, it doesn't matter. Sorry, I don't think the matter. source matters. I just wanted to know if it was conservation board or not. Right. That was not the conservation. Yeah, I know that for sure. Advisory board. Correct. 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 It didn't originate in the conservation board. Okay. Maybe an individual, but not as a board. Um, uh, 181 paragraph D, the wording should specify exactly what is required on a permit application, including a complete tree inventory of the proposed um, area affected. So section 181.10 provides the requested details um, in common above and more and more so if you look at the law right name and address site right, right. it right. actually requires the inventory so 181 dash four so if you look at the one channels okay so it's all it's well, in here right. extent to which the property requires cutting down killing or destroying trees any hardship this desire of observing the extent to which an area would be subject to increased water, um, height and desirability, need for visual or careful. So I think it's up higher. It's, it's, it is. It's uh, subsection B. So, yeah, the location of the tree mobile in relation to the property lines, description of the vegetative cover of the tree mobile area, including dominant species before and after the tree removal. So, I mean, there's we're asking for a ton of information based on their full inventory on the property. So I do think that is actually covered. No further action there. Discussion? No. Okay. So having discussions with Crawford Westfall and Milks needs to be honestly vetted on if this can be enforced. My understanding is it will not be building, zoning, highway, or engineering walking properties for permit review, question mark. Discussed. So the town board will be advised by a board to be determined and will be the ones deciding on approvals and related action. The town board may request input from other authorities within town government. So there's nothing preventing us from asking for that. Ultimately, we're the ones that make the decision. We get advised from, we can always refer it for, for additional information. Are we okay with that response? Because that's what I put together real quick. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have to suffer through me. Sure. 
Um, just to make sure we covered everything. So they're asking, is it enforceable to a life back here? That was my question. I was asking, <clears throat> do we have the capabilities in the manpower to do all the paperwork? And so that's coming up. I and think. if so, what department takes care of it? Is what I basically tried to say. Well, the, I mean, the advisory board is the one that would review and make the recommendations about whether to approve the plan to the town board. So it wouldn't necessarily fall on the back of anybody but that board, but this board. Right. Who hands the fines out to do some paperwork to the legally? The judge has to send a fine out. We can't. It's I don't know. No, no, I mean, if, if there were situations, I, I guess there are two different questions. The question in one instance is when an application is made, who does it go to? Then it would go to the tree advisory board and the town board. In the event of a violation, yeah, that would be something that would fall upon the code enforcement officer to issue citations and fines for violations of this provision as it would any other. But obviously, I mean, they're not, they're not going to be, I mean, we know people will be beating down the town stores if this gets passed every time somebody cuts a tree out. So right. we'll deal with it as we need to. Right. We okay with this response? <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, we can call others if we want into the discussion. <clears throat> Multi-million dollar investments will be held up and decided from a resident tree board. What will make this board qualified? So I think that the response there is the town board will determine qualifications, same as with all advisory boards, including the zoning board of appeals, because they have big authority. Um, regarding the 60-day approval timeline, this will need to be accounted for as part of a developer project plan. I don't think that's a big issue. Are we okay with that assessment? Okay. Mm -hmm. So who will be doing the full inventory of trees? One plus acres to know what's on the commercial properties for the five year roadblock. Oh, look back. <clears throat> Mispronounce that. So for the five year look back, discuss legal input. Well, at the outset, it's the applicant that has to do it as part of the application. And again, it's two. That's the problem. You have to look at two different angles. Who's going to do it when an application is submitted to the town board? Yeah, the problem, the more difficult answer is if we're investigating a violation. And I mean, how do you go five years back with a vacant land? I don't see the word Ouija board, but it goes back to the question what kind of look back? So you can't clear cut your land and then apply for an application to circumvent, okay, having to submit a plan within the five years. Of the cutting of the original cutting is what you're saying. If, if you submit an application tomorrow, the look back here to go back five years and that's what I'm saying. Okay, so after after a long standard look back. Back. Okay. Well, yeah, it'll go right. back five years or more to the point, point of law, the point of the law being right. created, right? Okay. I'm going to tell you right now if someone even cuts down an acre, we're probably going to know about it. Right. But knowing about it's a commercial it, property, we're probably going to be able to knowing about it, being sure. able to go on there and identify the number and species of trees are two very different things, which goes back to the discussion we already had about how do we avoid trespass? That cuts his trees down. Ron has to go get an authoritative to get an authoritative warrant to try and go on the property. I guess yeah. the enforcement of it is not going to be easy. Just keeps getting muddy. Oh, cell point, you can you don't have to go out on the property, you just stand there and say, Whoa, wow, <laughs> yeah, you, well, you can't count trees from standing out. On the well, you're not way. counting trees, it's a clear cutting, and and you're going to know it was clear cut. You can okay, just but, to, but the way that we value the fines, you have to the whole point of this is to identify the number of trees and preserve. Well, them. I, I think the earlier one legal discussion yeah. else. I think we're going to have to operate off of the standard. We're not going to say there was twice. You're assuming, on that, this we, one or but you're assuming on this. that we can do that, and that's the problem. Right. So that's why we need a legal discussion to further <laughs> challenge can we legally enforce that? That's right. So look back enforceability, though, build on that earlier comment. Is that okay? Yeah. Do we have the internal man, woman power? This is what. Um, oh, we did. If it's under contention during the building process and or a complaint, do we need to discuss that? Do we, what is anyone's thoughts? Well, 
It's the same answer. Yeah. Yeah. If it's during the building process, during the application process, yes, it goes to the tree advisory board and the town board. If it's a complaint or a violation, it falls to the code enforcement office, which that then it's a court action, and then they're not getting any building permits until they're set until we're satisfied. So I'm gonna just say accept it. Okay. That's okay. We accept the fact that there's going to be some incremental work there, possibly. Yeah. I mean, I would think that if we we we, got, we call on our town arborist, which we have on staff, yep, and you got to go out and take a look at the site. If it's a violation, it also may be that person as well, provided that we're given permission to enter on the property. Yep. So. Okay, the time for action is now. This tree ordinance has been in the works for over a decade. It is time for action, especially in light of what happened with the trees. So, point this should not be sent back for committee review or editing. It should be finalized by the town board after public input and reviewed by legal counsel to ensure it is enforceable. There's a related point on the opposite end. Um, we need to hear from other advisory boards and town employees who would have direct contact with the task and directives defined in this in the draft. So that's the question. Are we going to refer this back to advisory boards? Are we going to finalize the law? What, are, what is this? That's kind of what it's asking now. Obviously, we still need to talk to legal. Do we need to yeah. send it to, to code enforcement? Do we have to send it to all the advisory boards again? What are we going to do? Keep in mind, this thing keeps going around in that circle. I don't want to pass a lot of this. If I can just intercept the planning board had a lot of comments on Monday. Yeah. I think that's important. Oh, um, did they review it Monday? Yeah. Oh, I exactly. thought they put that off to the next meeting. Oh. So I well think, then it's already gone into I think that's board. important for it, it was it's been on their agenda. It's not something that was added, it's just been always on there. So they heard it coming up again and from what um Bruno explained that we should discuss this again because it's coming up again, but it's been sitting there. It wasn't anything that was, you know, said, hey, we need to do this. It just knew it was coming down the pipeline. It was probably was partially my fault that he uh, couldn't make it. I thought we'd refer it to people. But I thought, well, either way, if you guys can at least give us I mean, high level analysis, like don't get caught in the nitty gritty because I told we have the comments by the chance because we can always incorporate that at the very I end. I think it would be important for us. Pete, you want to summarize the comments? Um, they were they were not very favorable, but then again, I think a lot of the questions will be answered when we dive uh, into this legal. I, I think the biggest question is, is, is this even legal when we do this? Um, I think we need to answer those questions before we go deeper. They certainly you know, wanted to talk to them about it some more, but they want to know that this is. They didn't like the idea of creating another board, but we addressed that. Yeah. Um, talk about other mitigating factors, potentials, and um, but again, I, I, I really think we're, we're kind of spinning our wheels here until we understand some legal, you know, we have some legal I opinions do, here. I do think it's, so it sounds like it already went to the planning board. I mean, well, it's really not done the planning board. I mean, they didn't find, issue any findings. They just talked about it. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I thought they, they had it on the Yeah, it was, they've they've had had it, on. it was like it was they They've had it on their unfinished business. Right, that's what I'm trying to They didn't vote and send anything back. Yeah, no. Okay, so there's nothing coming out of that. Okay, got it. So I guess that's what I think we need to decide is do we need to send it back through the advisory boards? I think most of us already know what their concerns are going to be. But if we let's go through legal first and take a look at it. Well, that's the thing. Exactly. That's that's like that's like the, the rounding block. Yeah. You know, I, I know the EDA wanted to talk about it because it does have yeah. some impact there. What's that? Did we have send us? Yeah. Long range planning wanted to look at it. We stopped them basically saying we didn't report to you. Um, they would like to have some discussion on it. I think I think everybody parks a record like that some discussion. I think everybody would. That's that's fine. Right. So I think we'll revisit the discussion. Because I do think just I do think it's gone around and around. So I mean it let's just say we send it to all the boards. They have 20 different things that are brought up. Let's say five of those results in a revision of the, of the law again. So now we again revise the law. Are we going to take this? And keeping in mind, this is like the 
at least fifth time that this has gone around the circle. It's an iterative process. Mm -hmm. Right. Does it then have to go back through the advisory board again? And I mean, it's just it I think it's, it's, it's going to be a final point where the town board's going to say when we're done doing. Well, that. I mean, I would think that at some point we accept that sort of goal. We would do exactly what we're doing here. We've gone through the public, we have the public hearing, we took the public comments, make whatever changes we're going to make, get it approved by legal, send it out to the boards, and then take all the board feedback and have another meeting and say yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, and then do what we're going to do with it. Run that past legal, right? And, and then and then approve it yeah. or deny it. Sure, the board decides. I guess I guess that's the question. I'll, there's got to be a point where the town, you're right, a board says we've gone in this right. circle so, so many times. We know what the feedback is. We need to the get, a, get something that will get at least three votes from this committee from this board, if we can even do that. Sorry, go ahead, Tom. The feedback and my position on this from day one is that we have far too narrow a focus on what we're trying to do. We're trying to prevent trees from getting cut down. We're trying to stop projects. And that's not how we should be approaching this. What Grand Island residents appreciate isn't necessarily the existence of the trees that we have. It's green space and the semi-rural environment we have. And we can do that, not exclusive. We can preserve that stuff, not by just preventing cutting down trees, but by encouraging other actions. And this doesn't really do that. No. And I, yeah, I and, you know, and, and to go off that, there's some, there's some parts about this law, especially in the private side, where we've talked about what, as a town, we should do to, to create conservation stuff. And, and for the most part, everybody's been in agreement to that part. Everybody's had a couple of different discussions on how that tree board should operate. I think where, where we hit the where we hit the mud is when we start talking about private uh, development. And that's where people start to question property rights and all that other stuff. So, I mean, for the sake of moving forward for the town, for this whole uh, uh, piece of USA thing, I would really love to segregate these pieces out, and get this done, get it started. I would have loved, I said this a long time yeah. ago, I would have loved to have drafted a brief law, creating the tree advisory board that could have already been working for it, Correct. putting a species list together, working with the committee that we have now doing the tree inventory and getting some of these balls rolled. But yeah. That got shot down before. I mean, it just that wasn't really, but the intent of this law really wasn't about a tree advisory board or tree. Oh, the intent of this law this is to law stop cutting down trees and prevent development. And that's the that problem. The focus true. is absolutely it's, it's sure. It, it's not true. It's to prevent something like what just happened with South Point where to prevent trees from getting cut down. No, that's exactly what has I'm not going to put words in my mouth, but I've heard people like John say they don't even have a plan yet. They don't, they just went in and just clear cut and, you know, got no input from anybody. <laughs> it, it, we have right now nothing that prevents that from happening. What it would provide the opportunity for is a discussion as part of the planning <laughs> process and a thoughtful risk mitig or re mitigation plan coming from the developer. Right now, there's no requirement for any mitigation plan. They just say, okay, let's just cut it down. I'm not saying that that's what they do, but they, right now we don't know what they did because there's been no input that was provided to the town before they went and did it. And what this does, it does not stop the project. It does not stop clear cutting. All it does is provide a process by which we now have um, input from the developer that this is what their plan is. This is how they're gonna mitigate it. And we have the ability over a 60 day period to provide input on their plan. It doesn't provide us the ability to stop or that would ultimately be a taking. It's, oh, yeah. it's yeah. providing an opportunity that hit for the town to have input, something we have not had with the two projects in particular that the town, a lot of the public had a real problem with. And that's really what. The genesis of this law is it's nothing to do with, and I haven't heard of a grant that we've been denied because we don't have a tree board. I'm not sure that that's really true. In well, fact, we just got a grant. Nobody said we're, nobody has ever said that we've been denied any grants because we don't have a tree board. What they have said is that our failure to create a tree board has prevented us from applying additional grants 
that we would be eligible for if we had one. If you don't understand the difference between those two things, I don't know what to tell you. So I, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know of any grant that prevents you that where you cannot apply for it because you don't have a tree board. Okay. Aren't you the caveat? Please, please. I'm not the one. It's coming from your board. They're the ones who've been pushing this. That say we would be eligible for more grants if we had it. So I don't have that data. I'm, I'm unaware of any grant that we've been denied or that we could have applied for that we couldn't apply for because of the lack of a tree board. Let's carry on with this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so where did we leave off before this debate started? Second, so we did that when you're done there. Now that's where we are. What is the tree preservation plan 181-3F? Okay. So what is um it seems to be up to interpretation after this law is passed. Isn't that the point of the law? These guidelines could be altered continuously and not be one size fits all through the years. So this is what I said. This law creates a plan for town, commercial, and housing development properties. Ordinance is the plan a removal mitigation plan. So it's a tree removal mitigation plan. By by definition, didn't we doc, I, real quick, by definition, a document used to evaluate the impact of proposed construction activities on the existing landscape. Is there a document that's already been created? No, but it's no. it's I mean the contents of it are essentially defined in 181.10, where it says right. part of the site development and application for tree approval. Shall we made pursuant to this, and they have to look forward the following information. So it's not a form, but the contents of what the stuff would have is contained elsewhere in the law. Yeah. So they're 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 talk, they're pointing out that the issue is 181.3F is simply the definition of what a tree preservation plan is. Right. It's a document. If you want it's not a way to the very beginning right. of this. This is about tree preservation. This is a tree preservation plan through risk but, or through mitigation. But the, con the contents of what the plan has to require isn't in the definition section of the law. It's in all of the subsections. Right. So it's there. That person just looked at the, the correct just the there. definition in a vacuum without right. right. So are we comfortable yeah, with that response? All of this commercial property to be approved has oversight with planning, zoning, engineering, design standards, New York State regs, DC, etc. Now we are adding this extra permitting step to soften the blow of trees going down. Oh, I lost my spot. So, do we want to discuss that? So it is obviously an additional hurdle. Um, right now there's nothing in place. So currently there is nothing that prevents clear cutting by a commercial developer. Correct. And I think some on this board at least have the desire to have some kind of a control mechanism so that we have input when that type of clear cutting occurs. <laughs> Are we okay with that as a response? Sure. The only question I have to that is, if you own land, you pay taxes on it for many years. Who is the town to come in and tell me, or you, that we can't do this? That's a legal question, but we've already, okay. we've already covered which, it before you got here. Which probably is gonna be a dog fight, because I've seen it in other states. Okay, but this state might be different. Well, it's the, well, the reality is, is but the other problem is, as you got as you said, they clear cut at South Point. Trust me, I'm the last person who wanted to see that go. But in reality, the man owned the land, he clear cut where he's going to develop, and I got the plans from the town. So the town knows what was going to be clear cut. Well, those plans are submitted, nothing's approved. Well. They weren't finalized. Okay, correct. But somebody had to give them, had to give them a permit. Kind of block and issue of paper. It's not finalized. Right. Okay, but somebody had to give them from here permission to go in and do that. No, they didn't. No. They just went in and did it on their same one schmoo down at the corner. Yep. So what you're telling people is go in and plow everything down today. Just like Amazon 
there's not enough trees in that property to even count because it's all brush because I grew up hunting that. I know. So it really comes down to this meeting can go on for six hours. It's going to get absolutely nothing until your legal counsel can say, can you legally stop it? In That's Florida, one of the things that we it's, by, it's Florida. It's by where you live. And it's what that committee of that town section agrees on. Like my sister has to ask if she can remove a tree from her. Well, yard. that's the purpose of this. That's what so saying. when you say the, day, the one before that, so that Hamburg that you just right. mentioned, because Hamburg has almost exactly what you just described, where you can't just go and clear cut, even if it's one acre and it's an individual property owner, which well, I'm going to do clear cut. Short. If it was mine, I'm going to go and do the clear cut and deal with the town later. Yeah. Okay. Because there's nothing you can hold against me because I legally own it. It'll be a dog fight. You're right. All right. For one, well, it might be a dog fight, but this law, just so you're clear, has a couple of consequences. One is, will we give you yeah, plan you approval and permit approval and et cetera? Will we? But all it does is, you all that us people look at is, it's just another way for you guys to make money because you're going to charge for every different permit going on. It's just another way to take our money. And trust me, you already take enough from us. And I don't own any land on Grand Island except for where my house is. And that's it. Not the but even the one before that, so even yeah. the one before yeah, that, just so you're clear, it's this it's is only commercial and housing developments. A personal private property owner, even if they have 100 acres, if they never plan on developing, it does not apply to them. But that's the ones you should apply it to the commercial. This town's dying for commercial to get taxes. Housing, we're losing our keister on it. That's an opinion. No, that's a fact. You can look at the numbers. No, no, it's not a fact because I think uh, half of the, the residents would rather not have a large development. And the other half may want a large well, the development. Well, the half that doesn't want large developments, are they willing to pay 25% more taxes? Yeah. That is well, or right. is it this what I said to me? We're, right. we're off topic. Yeah, yeah, let's get through that. What we're doing. Okay. Okay. We got to get through this. Sorry to get you off. We need this to go. The cows come home. And we're not going to All this first property to be approved. Okay. okay. So I think our response here is what did we come up with? I, I kind of lost track. Of that. So we're, we're saying, yes, there, there's nothing in place now to prevent it. I'm going to say generally because I can't say. Right. In the first line says mechanism two should be the word there. Good. Yep. Yeah. How are we going there? So it's five minutes. Or so um, five year look back. So any individual or company that has owned property before this law. So so this is it's not grandfathered. So um, it's from the date of the law effectiveness going forward. So five years true. after this law is enacted, it would be a five-year look back. A year from the time the law is enacted, it'll be a one-year look back. Correct. Or one day, depending on the Correct. day that you're... So I think that's that response is what I, I put up there. So I think we keep going. Um, we have no idea what the tree replacement requirement will be, costs for mitigation. A resident-made tree committee will decide equal replacement. So. Um, this is that legal discussion we mentioned up above. Standard per acre. So I agree. I don't think it should be subjective. I think it would be very tough to say it's 20 trees or 100 trees. It should just be a set price and that would be part of the risk that the developer would decide do i want to move forward and break the permit or not um if the replacement plan is determined by someone 
Shouldn't we set fee amounts or have an idea? So same as above. Um, so that's the same answer. I think we need a, a standardized cost per acre. Okay with that? Yeah. I mean, it's going to come from the, the attorney, but yeah. So dip, um, do different zones look different? Um, the answer is we don't differentiate. All right. Okay. No, why, so wouldn't, we, why wouldn't we differentiate? Is, is business property different than commercial versus industrial? Which is yeah. the property that we sell under commercial development. Mm -hmm. Are we are we gonna are we gonna tree mitigate for three acres on Grand Isle Boulevard to stop a commercial project or steer a commercial project now? I didn't answer that question. I would I would say this is the intent of this is not to stop any development. It's okay. just to have input before they do clear cutting. Okay. So I think to characterize it that way is wrong. Is in my opinion inaccurate. Well, how would you like to characterize that? It's getting input, having. Similar to, to South Point, I think we all know, and Pete, if you disagree, if this law was in effect, would we have stopped the clear cutting? Would we have had any ability to stop the clear cutting that occurred on South Point? Might be right. Well, would it have given us the ability to have input before that clear cutting occurred? I don't know the, what, you, what your input would be, though. I mean, you could say you're taking down this many trees, and, and they, they did have a general plan of where they were going to put the stuff. And they needed to do some topographical stuff. So they took trees out where they knew for absolute certainty they were going to remove them. But I don't know that they went farther or do we don't know. It down. We don't know if they considered any mitigation. We don't know. That's this okay. will provide in writing to the town that they considered mitigation of the clear cutting. Okay. That doesn't exist right now. Nope. And and I think we can all agree without any doubt that we would not stop that project, number one, and that even though it's a mature, one of the greenest spots on the island, it would not have stopped the clear cutting on that property. Nope. Nor would this board have stopped it because it, that's not the purpose of this law. It's to mitigate the clear cutting. Anyone that thinks it's doing something differently is not reading what this law says. Okay. I don't believe we, if you think we this law would permit us to say no, you can't do the clear cutting to free development, that's not what this law does. Do okay. Do different zones, do we need to discuss that any further? Sorry, go ahead, Pete. No, whatever. Just put it in. John, the only thing we really hit was um do different zones look different? Business, commercial, industrial districts versus residential. And I think we're saying no different. Yeah. Is there anything else we wanted to share on that discussion? I just want to make sure. Okay. So I grouped these together because they're somewhat similar, I believe. About 10 or 20 years of contention because at this um, continues to come up as a law that is over restrictive, has no teeth, or has no in plan. Um, every town board, planning board, and advisory board has unanimously turned down a version of this, but a few conservation advisory board members. Do we need to discuss that any further? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to take the statement. No, no discussion. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, this is. There is a lot of, there's property rights. I mean, I, I need to be fair. There's property right considerations that are very real, but you would agree with that. And there's, but there's also, I think a lot of folks, including those that believe in strong property rights that also think, um, you know, environmental considerations, mitigating the clear cutting, I think is a reasonable thing um, wherever, wherever possible. In some places, it's not gonna be possible. That's what this law is permitting to occur. Um, this law is not needed for the Tree USA. Tree USA requires a tree care plan, a tree board for education that is in best practices, attempts to preserve, care for, replant, discourage removal of trees unnecessarily. It is a program in its requirements for city, town, village, properties, not private. They also need to spend like $2 per capita. The argument is we are losing out on grant money. Yes, we are. 
we are because they are making the tree USA designation too difficult. Town, oh, get up on that. <laughs> Where do that? Um, town tree ordinances are typically for municipal street trees and more urban areas where zoning doesn't guide tree removal and or preservation. We can have an ordinance for town properties, although it makes it more restrictive on properties that town, the town already has oversight on. Like environmental um, protection overlays, we don't typically put them on town properties and have been advised against it. Um, so I wrote this and we can totally rewrite it. So don't worry. Um, I'm just trying to make it more effective. Um, we recently did receive actually a pretty decent uh, tree grant. Um, I don't know that we really are being denied any grants or that we can even apply. Right from the DEC website. Benefits of becoming access to funding sources through the Arbor Day Foundation. So and then you do get additional points on existing that we're being DEC denied grants. We can't apply. No, yeah, it's saying it, it, it the Arbor Day Foundation is more available. That's all. Yeah, it improves our scoring. Um, the driving force for this law is, is yeah, and, and it has always, and I, I don't think anyone will disagree. Right. The driving force was not tree USA or tree the tree or um, tree grants. The driving force it started with a property next to tops. Yep. And for it's twenty years time. now, we've been trying to put a tree ordinance in place to mitigate tree clearing, tree clearing, which may have even proceeded. I don't know how long tree USA has been around. So that's really what was the genesis. And I think the overall general population would like to see some kind of mitigation of clear cutting wherever possible. That's kind of what this says. The driving force for this law has always been tree preservation. A certain portion of the public has requested this action to preserve trees where possible. Tree USA is a benefit, but was not related to the origin or driving force behind the law. Do we need does anyone want that edited or what are your thoughts? Okay with that? I don't agree with it. Well, go ahead. The majority of the community isn't necessarily concerned about preser preserving trees. They're concerned about yeah, more general no green space. I said a portion, I never said a majority. I have no idea so what this time portion is. Got it. I, I never said a majority. I said a certain portion of the public has requested. And that, I think that's correct. Okay, so ten percent requested. It, we should just do it. We should step on everybody else's property rights because they're couple left. Well, that's what our legal question. I think that goes back to that's what the town board was decide. Decide. question. Whether or not you want to implement a tree ordinance at all, it's a policy question. True. Well, it's a town board question. It, it, it's a question of the town board I mean, policy. In a perfect world, if I were able to paint with a broad brush, I'd say if you're going to do it, have a development plan. Do the selective clearing that's necessary to install your roads and your utilities. And the spots where your houses are going to go will be developed by the individual homeowners. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, clearing within the right of way doesn't cause me any heartburn. Right. The problem that happened with South Point, and it's perfectly within their rights, was that they already had their idea of what they want to do. So, they know where their buildings are going to go. They cleared all of that. Could they have done a, a more selective job? They, according to the Gentlemen that I spoke to the following morning after the clear cutting started, they said they would try to. I don't know if they were able to accomplish that or not. I didn't go on their property. Right. As I said, you can look in and you can see big open spaces, but will anything ever be developed there? That's and again, yeah. I mean, if question. Mr. Shirt passes away tomorrow, will it uh, end up being something else? Yeah. John, can I just ask a question? I think that's a good example. So now we're at the stage, right? So let's just pretend this law is on the books. So now we send someone out there to look at that and decide what trees should have come down and shouldn't have come down or how how do we do that that's the question how now mike how do we, or anyone so let's just say the law was already in so now we need to do the law we need to follow through and go on the property and decide what we're going to do so where how do we decide what was taken down was proper or not who so I, first of all we don't even know if this law can be enacted yet yeah. so we're, we're getting so far down the road and into okay. the weeds that's not a, a applicable question at this point okay. but, but i think a quick answer is everyone knows what was clear cut everyone knows it was right, but whether it's right or not for development and how you develop the property that's for who to interpret is yeah, it no, someone the, right the lack of a permit would result in 100 percent of the clear cutting that occurred 
there being a penalty for that, which includes replacement of that many trees. But whatever standard okay, we come up with, clearly we can do that. Well, it might to be, be a monetary thing. Who knows? Who knows to be determined. Are. That is part of the work. That's an option. So, okay. um, so the next one is this money grab that can be enforced. How many $350 fines will have to be collected to make a difference in our tree replacement program for our town to see the benefit from or is collected to clear dead ash trees? It sets our town up for some sort of some sort of litigation. Um, this negates property rights and investments when it's zoned for such developments. This local law does not allow for responsible development as written in our master plan without unnecessary hardships financially, permit fee and loss in time. Residents can be extremely biased when placed on a board such as this and can make this ordinance work in one's favor of opinion to another. It is set up for a political clout and will be used as such depending on sitting elected board members. It will not stop clear cutting laws on the books that can't be enforced to reach its objective are a waste of taxpayers' money and resources. So I didn't write a response there. I, 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 my only response is it's not intended to stop clear cutting. It's, we seek to have mitigation and at least have some level of input from the town, basically. Why don't we just chalk up the here? What's that? What's the chalk up the here? That statement. Okay. Okay. Well, well, I don't know that it's an opinion. I think what, what it's part a of that valid. Is it? Some of it's true, and well, some of it, I mean, it is well, definitely it's an opinion. It's an I opinion. mean, some of it is. I mean, if there is a three hundred fifty dollar fine. Okay, but it's not about money. But it's although it wouldn't be a fine. This. Yeah. Oh, the suggestion that implementing this law is about money is completely erroneous. Uh, right. Well, the rest of it. <laughs> It's not true. It could be true. Could it be used for crop? Absolutely. Could this be a bunch of nonsense? Sure. It's not going to be the five bucks forever. That's right. Right. Not the same five now as it was two weeks ago. Everything will change. So you might say, well, yeah, we wouldn't use it for clear cutting, but that doesn't mean it can't be. So, so no answer. So no further discussion needed there. Zoning and design standards are how green space areas are protected. Current projects that are currently under the town's review have been more or less approved through zoning, PDDs granted, the variances being asked for are mute when it comes to tree protection. We can't make smoke and mirror laws to appease voters. Design standards and landscape are not enforced now within our business districts and residential developments. It, will, it all seems to be up for interpretation. Yep. So same as couldn't agree more. That was me. And my my feeling behind that is that my own personal feeling, but I'm one of our whole town, is that this is all about design standards yep. and building a better relationship with our developers on the island and making sure that these things are tightened down back as we go along and having those conversations. So certain situations okay. like our solar farm and other things aren't after the fact. It's before the fact and we have a clear thing on it. So the design standards and certain things are put in beforehand, that's about improving our island and asking and doing the right thing than punishing and fining. So that's all I hate to text. Well, it was. wouldn't be a punishment or a fine if well, it's a comply. punishment to a developer because it's time, effort, money, and whatnot. So if they've invested in a certain amount of property, so that's their investment. So all those developers right there now that have invested in money and in our town, whether they live here or not, the property values just went down because of this law that implemented. You think this will have an impact on property value? Oh, yes. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we talked about earlier. The cost of getting to put this together will Three absolutely times. impact the cost of value. Of and I have nice. no skin in the game. I'm just along with this because I started it five years ago, and when I start something, I'm finishing it. That's it. Uh, we hit the next I am one. skeptical that it will have. When we said earlier, if a developer comes in, they're not going to want to buy a property with a bunch of trees. You're not going to pay so much money to. Money to I mean, that. a property with no trees is now worth more than a property with trees. I mean, it's going to affect that. Some, that's, that's, subjective. Subjective. that's subjective, I think, because I think that's a lot of people want to live in wooded areas. Yeah. And if if the, what this the idea, as I said before, right. is that we're going to clear the areas that are necessary for the development improvements. Yet the individual housing sites will be left wooded. The, as you come in as homeowner, you want to build your new house. 
you clear what you deem is necessary for the house, about, whether it's the entire lot or not. But we're not talking about homeowners. You're talking about a person who's going to develop that pot. I understand. Front, having as to I just said, we're only going to clear the idea is to only clear the areas that are going to be developed for right. the necessary other significant added cost of even obtaining a permit to do it. it it is more we understand that so what you're saying is is basically leave the building lots untouched and just clear where you want to want to put in your roads and your infrastructure well whatever you need to do for your infrastructure i mean you're going to have to clear some of those areas on building lots for easements and things of that nature so if somebody comes in with a 200 acre subdivision and they need to clear 30 acres to put a road in mm -hmm. and they're so we're only going to talk to them about 30 acres we're not going to talk about the rest right and that's just going to be that would be my interpretation okay all right i just want to understand i mean i don't want to i don't want to try to impose on the individual homeowner okay. this law i don't think this is what it's intended that's, well we also shouldn't be holding the, the developer responsible for that property even though he's not touching it, right he's basically just going to buy it improve it i have one point of and then and then uh um, and then sell it. So that means it isn't a 200 acre subdivision, it's 30 acres worth of disturbance. And that's why it's less valuable to him. Mm -hmm. I, I do think just trying to understand the environment, oh. hardwood forests, whatever, have tremendous value, especially on Grand Island, and requiring a mitigation plan to try and mitigate the amount of clear cutting. I don't see it as a huge burden. I mean, you're going to go in and say, uh, in general, there's 100 trees per acre over these 30 acres. Well, as I said before, the question becomes two. I mean, it's not. Let's like go, go back. East Riverside Woods subdivision is a very, very heavily wooded, hardwood area. Riverwoods Drive goes up, Timberlink comes off, um, you know, Alwood, Spicer Creek, that whole area. They cleared what they needed to clear for their development. They left the lots wooded because people wanted to buy wooded lots. That's yep. what they always even though the guys are really dying anyways no we cut it down i get it. i always so said you know i mean in conjecture i said that no you know, you, oh, you yeah, buy yeah, a wooded yeah, lot you're paying for the trees three times right. because you got to buy the trees around the lot you're going to buy the trees to cut down because you got to cut them down and then the other ones are going to die when you fill around them and you're going to replace them so but that's fine well, you that, that that's the argument want to take down more trees than they have to it costs money they only want to cut down what they have to do. Well, exactly. But if I took that whole 200 plus whatever acres site that was, and I wanted to harvest the trees out of it as a income thing, I shouldn't be penalized for that. So why, why, would, why are we I passing was, this law? Why, can, <laughs> why should it be okay for somebody to clear cut it and drop it on selling the selling trees, okay but it, not developing the harvest? That's, you know, design. It is. It's. It's not. It, I don't know. We're looking at you because we're coming in. I don't think we're going to have the problem. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Okay. Um, this tree ordinance is not going to change land development requirements, what lands, or simply stop trees from being cut down. It only confuses the public and makes investing developers and businesses the environmental destroyers and take his, takes it off the politicians temporarily. Incentives in green space protection have never been fully vetted. I believe working a common goal that can be enforced will do more for the town of Grand Island than this local law. I can agree with that. This thing is far more about politics than it is about promoting green space, so. Well, if we could put some incentives in there to promote green space, I'm all for it. We can do it in a lot of different ways. Nobody wants to have that conversation. I do think, you know, thinking that just working with developers is going to get you there. I'm not sure that anything would have changed with South Point. I'm not sure that that would have changed in any way. I don't, I don't think that at all. I think I yeah. think you change your, your uh, requirements for subdivision. I think I think you, you talk about a uh, design standard for for residential. I think you talk about your density percentages and all that other stuff, and, and you you make you make them basically. Promote more what you want to have than what you're giving. If you don't like something about a project, then change the law. From a green space and tree preservation standpoint, we would want every damn project that came into this town to look like the one that Amazon presented. Yep. They were going to plant over a thousand trees on that property without us ever having to ask. That's the type of stuff we should be looking to work towards. We should be working with developers to try and get them to engage in things like that. 
rather than trying to stick them with fines and jam them up to prevent them cutting down trees that we can't stop them from cutting down. So, and, and to your point, John, that timber link section, Riverview, all that, those are beautiful subdivisions with mm -hmm. mature trees. Yeah. You go to park, you go to Parkview over there off of uh, same thing. Yeah. You know, they, they were very really highly high sought. High yes, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And uh, that's the kind of, I mean, to me, that's, I think, what we're, we're all looking at going, this is what we want to push, you know, intense, more intense tree, trees and, and tree, keeping the trees. But I think, I think if you do it more by, by a, a design standard and, you know, talking about uh, developmental percentages and stuff like that, you can drive it as well. So that's how's we done with design standards, like two trees per lot and things like we that? We don't have design standards on residential. You have stuff in the code. But it's it's not it's not being enforced. No, right. We don't have a design standard. Well, there are certain things that we have a design standard on commercial property and town center. That's it. It doesn't even apply to what we have in our industrial zone. Yeah. So the work. So is there anything more we wanted to add on this one? Any changes to the law or anything like that? With respect to like that, that's a good point though. If we're not enforcing it, then design standards with two trees. If we can't do that, how are we going to do that? Which is, I'm just saying, if we can't do that, this is monumental we money and a lot of money that the dollars are going to be that. Well, I'll be optimistic. And just like any of our laws, I would hope that they're enforced. Um, well, I'm a tree lover. This ordinance is a terrible idea. Its enforcement will be purely subjective. Those pushing it. Do not want any development on the island. That is fine that they feel this way, but they shouldn't be able to dictate how people use their own property. We have zoning laws and building codes for that. And I want to be clear, I'm including all comments. So I didn't I didn't edit it anything. So um I think we kind of discussed this. Do we need to say anything on that one? Other things. Okay, yeah, true. Okay, um, this is a good one. Um should there be should there be for provisions for logging? The trees are frequently removed for their value or not just to enable development. Can trees be considered a crop or commodity? And trees, yes. are, trees are. And a lot of you want to look at a lot of river oaks, the one we were just talking about. They, they took a bowl of trees out for that reason alone. Right. The law can make money to make it a better place. Right. Plus, that area now is 30 every, years since it was put there. Those young trees yeah. are now older trees, and the old trees have been long gone and dead. Yeah. So it's just like South Point. And trust me, I'm the last guy that wanted what happened at South Point to happen. I understand. But the healthy woods that's there is not healthy. It's going to die anyways. 80% of that woods will be dead in 10 years because they have not timbered it and right. taken healthy trees out. But that's where you do selective. No. Well, that's where you may need to do selective. Where they actually cut was brush anyways. Right. Most of it was brush. And I'd be very, I have, you know, to my kids, but I had 83 acres of land in the southern tier. And I selectively cut it twice mm -hmm. over the course of well, every 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done mine once. I'm doing four more years down there. You have to do it to keep right, it because it promotes growth you have on the forest. The bad trees out. There's yeah. a boatload yeah. of bad timber on the island that you actually want going. And the people that don't know trees don't know that. So, I mean, all right, so that one. So if trees can be a crop, I mean, that's undeniable. Um, answer the next one is no. Nothing we can do about it. That's right, all right. Getting close. One acre, one acre trigger seems aggressive. Should there be different standards or different trigger acreages for different zoning types or areas? And I think this is for commercial or housing. I don't think it's for private. So um, I, did, I, think, I did address that, but I think it, it I think almost it is too restrictive. I mean, it it almost 200 by 200, roughly speaking. Yeah. It's a housing lot. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, but, but for again, for anything to be subdivided, it pretty much has to be bigger than that. And that's what I was going to say. We probably can just remove it because it's almost useless because you're dealing with either subdivision approvals or site plan approvals, neither of which you I mean I guess you could have a one acre you could have a commercial site plan approval on a one acre lot yeah. but I mean you're never a subdivision you're not yeah. um I don't know how 
many do you have any point your spots left on like the boulevard? How many Maybe I, I don't know. I have to look, but we might. I mean, you know, for instance, if the Equest property were to be cut up into a bunch of camp a campus like setting as originally was designed, then now those weren't one acre, but but it's still you, could, you could have someone come in to and say, I would like to but it, buy an acre and they might sell them that. I guess, but it would still we'd have to subdivide that portion of the land. Right. So you'd either have to deal with the subdivision approval, mm -hmm. which would be part of a bigger problem, or the ultimate site plan approval. Right. So that was for the definition. I, I'm not sure if it sure. shows up anywhere. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't matter any. Okay. The, by definition. And clear cutting. Clear cutting greater estimated. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's Sorry. not really a trigger. It's only in. It's only for clear cutting. Clear cutting so it's completely irrelevant. Yeah. So, yeah. It's okay. You can go back one. So it's not. I mean, I well, no, I just want to make you sure. If you have one acre and it was entirely wooded, it would matter. But aside from that. Okay. So it's a. <clears throat> So I think we're good on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like this law would diminish the value of a wooded lot as it would be easier and more economical to, to develop a non wooded lot. It is changing the visibility of a piece of property open to a, a taking or hardship liability. We want to discuss that. that a couple of times. Okay, um, is there any legal issues created by the 60 day period? And that'd be to discuss with our attorneys. Not yeah, here. Legal question. I know we've already discussed it though. But we'll, we'll, since we're talking with legal, we'll just revisit it. Okay, so um, that was the public comment. To be clear, I think we've gone through this. I don't think we said any real changes to the law based on the public comment. Is that correct? Um, so now we're going to do a legal review, which could generate some change. And then following that, I think we then have a discussion because I think we need to also roll up our sleeves and go through it one more time sure. and say in or out, in or out, in or out. And then, then I think we decide, does it go back? To committee, or does does it go up for a vote, up or down? If that makes sense. Everyone, one okay with that? Sure. And I think that's it for today. All right. So I'll put this for discussion on Monday's workshop for executive session. So Tuesday. I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. So motion by Councilman Bradley, second by Councilman Bolivar. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed?